Hey guys, the word for today is easy. It's a word that I don't think I have ever used when it comes to gardening or growing vegetables because there's so many variables uh, with the soil types, the fertilizers, the moisture, rain, wind, temperature, so many things that can go wrong. Uh, gardening, in my opinion, is not easy, but it is a very simple uh, concept. However, I have found something that I think qualifies for easy. Growing hydroponic lettuce. Let me explain. I built this rail system behind me. Watched a bunch of videos on YouTube to see how to put the things together. Went and got all the parts, assembled it. Got me a reservoir, mixed up some fertilizer, dumped it in there, turned the pumps on, and let it go. All I did was come by and top it off once in a while, and that was it. This lettuce has been growing for just about 30 days now. I started on either March 26th or March 27th, one or the other. Today is April 25th, so about 30 days into it. And that stuff is looking absolutely perfect. As I said, I built the rail system after watching some videos. First thing I had to do was get the rail situated. What I'm doing right now is drilling out the holes in this third rail right here. And one of the things, if you never worked with PVC before, I could have used PVC pipe and that would have done fine, but for whatever reason I just wanted to look and the, uh, be able to do it with the square boxes right here. So that's what I'm going to do. But you're going to take a hole saw and drill a hole in here and you got a bit, regular drill bit in the bottom of it. You get that thing started right where you want it at. Drill your hole and you see how quick that thing bites into the PVC. If you're not careful, it'll break your wrist. What you want to do is reverse it and actually drill that thing in reverse. You get a real nice smooth hole right there. Again, line up your drill bit with your hole. Make sure you got that right. You're going to drill down in there to get that pilot hole in place and once you get your hole in the center it bites I mean it bites really quick right here just reverse it drill your hole out so now I got all my holes drilled in there nice and neat for the third rail and all this is is this right here it's a what they call a post jacket it's made to go around a 4x4 post after I got my rails drilled out so I could put my little neck cups in here, I just went and temporarily silicone right around here at the bottom and put these end caps on. Just using some regular PVC fittings, made a little manifold right here to tie all three together. Nothing is uh, glued right here. It's all just uh, pressed together so it can be taken apart real easy. For my dump line, rather than having a flap where I open it up, you know, to be able to get the lid out of the way. What I decided to do was just go ahead and put it down in and make a screw-on adapter do it that way. That makes it nice and simple for me to be able to get the lid off. So when I need to top this off, just pull the lid out of the way and dump some more nutrients in there. This has been running for 30 days and not one time did I ever dump this reservoir out and start from scratch. All I have done was top it off sometimes with uh, plain water and sometimes with the nutrient mix. For the aeration I got this multi-valve air pump right here. It's actually got four valves on it. I'm just using two because I got two different air stones inside. I got this one about a four inch and another one about two inch. For my circulating pump nothing fancy. A little Echo 264 circulating pump works out just fine. When I turn the pumps back on, you can see how well that water is getting aerated and also the water coming back in from the drain side over here. My biggest concern in starting with the hydroponic stuff was figuring out how to maintain the pH, how to keep the nutrient levels right, all that kind of stuff. And basically what I did was just pour the nutrient mix in there and add water, top it off and not worry about anything else. A lot of people had asked about the pH and the ppm of the water and this is, uh, this is not what it's supposed to be. I just checked my tomatoes in the Dutch buckets 
and they were showing a 6.2 and about a 15.20 on the PPM. This right here, I don't know if you can see that, but it's showing a pH of 8.4 for this lettuce. That's a little bit higher than what you would uh, expect to see for lettuce. Maybe a lot higher. As far as the PPM goes, like I said, I just checked the tomatoes down there and they were showing 15, 15, 20. This right here. This is showing 22, 20. Which is about three times as high as the book would say for growing hydroponic lettuce. Like I said, I just started the thing up. I didn't worry about what the water was doing. That kind of deal. All the thing I did was make sure I had some water in it, add some nutrients now and then. As long as the plants were fine, I was fine. As for what I use for drippers, I tried to let them just be open and let them drip, drain right into the cup and let it run all the time. But I didn't have the little clamps to clamp this tubing down. So what we ended up doing was switching these little uh, drip things right here and put this on the end. And that created a problem because I don't have a filter and this thing kept getting clogged up so I took it off. And I switched to these right here. These are the ones I think that come off the little shrublers. They're adjustable. So I could screw it open, lay it up here and it would drip and it wouldn't slide off the side. Now that I've already cut this lettuce out of the way, I can just screw it back down, shut off the supply to it. That worked out real good. And a quick look at what's going on inside, as far as the roots go. This is what I got. You can see, you got a lot of smaller roots that stayed right in here. And then you had some that finally dropped down when they got to the nutrient solution. And then they took off when it got into the bottom. When you buy vegetables from the grocery store and you go in there and you get that lettuce that's tasteless, and you get them tomatoes that are uh, about hard as a baseball. You know the hydroponically grown majority of them and they just have no taste to them. So I wonder what this stuff would taste like. Let me tell you something. I fixed me a sandwich yesterday, a big old thick tomato sandwich. Put me about three nice chunks of this lettuce on there. My question was, was it fit to eat? You better believe it. That was one good sandwich. That lettuce tasted 10 times as good as anything to come out of the store. But for ease of growing, not having to deal with bugs climbing up on it, not having to wash the grits off of it from the soil, this was the easiest thing I have ever grown. Looking at those numbers with the pH, the PPM, all of that stuff was wrong as far as what the book says. But sometimes uh, the books are not always exactly right. There's always some variants there, some things that you can get by with, and lettuce, I think, is one of those that is uh, probably more forgiving than anything else. So, so if you want to grow some hydroponic stuff and get some good fresh lettuce to put in your salads and put it on your sandwiches and things like that and do it in a manner that is basically foolproof, uh, if I could do it, not knowing anything about it other than watching a few videos and just putting this thing together and turn the pump on and let it rip, Anybody can do it. It's that easy. So y'all take care and I'll see you next time.